Greetings, unsettled souls. Yes! Greetings, I say. It's uh, Sam I. B. DeGangie doing political commentary for The Media Speaks. You might know me from Wits News or Blasting News. Should you know me from Wits News, uh, do keep an ear to the ground because I have an article coming out about the Jeffrey Epstein madness. Hello, Jonathan. So that's going to be one you want to catch. It should be, if, if it's not up now, it should be up very, very soon at Wits News. This camera has me looking like a troll. And again, maybe I just look like a troll. All right, guys, getting right into this information liberation. There has been growing number of people who are in favor of gender assignment surgery for children under the age 13, 10. The other day it came up on my comment line with a four-year-old. And I'm like a freak. I was somehow the conservative in the room. I was floored by this. Um, first of all, when I was a little kid, I thought that I wanted to be Wonder Woman. Children get sold things through you know, comic books, TV, whatever. I mean, it's, it's been it's been forever. It's been through all of history here. So, now's a horrible time. So, basically, this is harmful to children. Not to mention, biologically changing very important things the, the body does through puberty. Altering puberty, I should say, is very, very dangerous. Listen to this. I mean, this is just growing. This this is happening quite a bit. A, fa a Texas father has been allegedly prohibited from raising his son as a boy because his ex-wife allegedly decided that their son is a transgender girl and is preparing him for chemical castration at the age of eight and a future sex change surgery, which the father may be forced to help pay for. Now... Let me point something out here. First of all, I don't care where you lick it, stick it, or otherwise use it as long as everybody's on the same page and everybody's adults. I've heard instances of 25-year-olds with 16-year-olds. You know what? I Not my cup of tea, but that's I, I get it. You know, I, But when you're talking about children, this is insanity. I used to draw a Wonder Woman star on my head. I think I started to tell the story. Might as well finish it. And my mother politely said, oh, Sammy, you're a boy, but you certainly would make a great superhero. She didn't tell me that I was gay or that I wanted to be a woman. Why? Because I was four. Um, listen to this. RT, Jeff Younger, who is locked in a court battle with his ex-wife over whether their son should undergo transition to a girl, says court order bans him from discussing things like religion or the need to be respectful to girls. Now, isn't that interesting? Let's pause there. We have long known that many aspects of more radical feminism, I know there's many feminist Christians, more radical feminist Christian, uh, more radical feminism wants to get rid of Christianity. The more radical forms have wanted to do that for a long time. Well, isn't it interesting that you're not allowed to teach men now that they're supposed to be respectful to girls? The court is ordering the father not to tell his son to be respectful to girls, even though his wife's trying to transition him into a girl, which can't be done, by the way. Your DNA does not change. But listen to this. Jeffrey and his former spouse, Anne Jor Jor looks like Jorgalus, are trying to resolve a parental dispute over their son, James. Anne insists that James identifies as a girl, calls him Luna, and envisions hormone therapy and eventually sex change surgery in the future. Jeff rejects the idea and says his son is, a perfectly, is perfectly comfortable being a boy in his presence. In other words, she's pushing him towards this. The pair are fighting a legal battle with the court temporarily ordering Jeff to not impose male identity on the eight-year-old child. The order forbids Jeff calling his son James in front of anyone who knows him as a girl, and this significantly limits what they can do together. 
basically I can't go to school. I keep him where well, he could not use the name, but okay. I can't go to school. I keep him away from any friends he might have at school that know him as a girl. And at my house, he's known as James and I use male pronouns. Look, this is just healthy parenting here. This is nuts. He's afraid to read the Guinness Book of World Records to his son for fear that it'll talk about women, the biggest woman, biggest man. He also says um, there he's a religious Orthodox Christian, and he's worried about reading the Genesis account to his son. It's the creation of everything. We've pretty much dis decided that, um, and especially with the, uh, the the discovery of the Higgs boson that, like it or not, the story laid out in Genesis lines up pretty well. He can't even tell his kid how the world was created. And he's being prepared for the sex surgery. It started, it says, at the age of seven. I'm sorry. That's child abuse. You are listening to the Dunce Cap of the Month award show, and they get dumber as we go. Let me do say that if, and this happens too, if some children already know that they are gay, I'm not saying to force anyone into it, but he's being forced the other way. Anybody with me here? I, I, this just, I'm just trying to talk in sane terms here. Listen to this. Man arrested. Oh, excuse me. Mom arrested over <coughs> viral video of daughter licking tongue depressor and putting it back. Paul Joseph Watson, Prison Planet. Now, think about this for a minute. It is now a thing. And it's, it's a felony, by the way. It is now a thing to film yourself defiling food for other people. And at first it started off as a joke. People were just licking the ice cream. Okay, that is just licking the ice cream. Not that big of a deal, right? Unless, of course, you happen to have some kind of an affection and somebody else happens to be on immunosuppressive drugs, which they give for medicine, if they happen to have AIDS or an otherwise damaged immune system, particularly if they have AIDS and don't know it, that could give somebody a form of pneumonia that would kill them. That's just one example. This countless. This is taking off as a thing. This, these are people that are already sick. These are tongue depressors. Often used for strep throat or whatever. So listen to this. A Florida mother was arrested after filming viral video, or it wasn't viral when she filmed it, of her daughter licking a medical tongue depressor and putting it back at the doctor's office. 30-year-old Corey Ward was charged with tampering with a consumer product without regard, regard of possible death or bodily injuries, News 4 Jacks reported. Uh, she reported her daughter... Licking the ob she recorded her daughter, excuse me, licking the object and replacing it at the Jackson Mills doctor's office, despite a sign saying, do not touch medical staff supplies. So, I mean, you, you got to give the doctor credit here. He's well aware of the stupidity, hello, Matt, of the stupidity that exists within the world that he's in here. The doctor was already ahead of the game and said, don't play with it. Of course, that was an invitation. The caption accompanying the chat Snapchat said, don't tell me how to live my life. In other words, laughing at the sign that was put there. So maybe if it hadn't been there, they wouldn't have done it. There's irony. When you're dealing with idiots, what is the Dunce Cap of the Month award show? A tearful ward told Newsjax 4, I would never put somebody else at risk and apologize for causing offense. The maximum penalty of convicted is 20 years in prison, although ward is likely to get away with a slap on the wrist if the felony is reduced to a misdemeanor. I would say, if nothing else, a lot of community service. I don't know that I'd hit her with a felony. But if they did, I wouldn't say they were nuts. I'm a softie. Falling national IQs combined with obsessive social media fame people, it brings out the worst in people. And read the article for the rest of it. It gives commentary on it. I'm giving you commentary on it now. Our world has lost its mind. Um, if you like what you're hearing, do remember we've got lots of stories left, and you can donate at the correct views at hotmail.com through PayPal. The money you give me, I put back into the show cameras, computers, research time, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, Paul Joseph Watson, I mentioned this in the uh, description box below. When artists, particularly with very little talent, when artists that are 
you wonder how they even got on the radio. Want to make a splash. They've been known to try to venture into the world of politics. Now, I'm not against this to the degree that some people are. For instance, I think if you've traveled all over the world with a band for 10 years, 20 years, 40 years, then you, you should have some say in the public debate about what works and what doesn't work, that kind of thing. Also, if you're somebody who's gotten into politics and music and it, politics is something you have always done, then it would make sense that you would do it. Ted Nugent would be one on the right. Rage Against the Machine would be an example on the left. Uh, bad religion on the left. The, the, I get it. He's like a college professor. I get that. Ariana Grande probably can't tie her shoes without an instruction booklet, which isn't going to help her because she can't read the instruction booklet. Listen what this idiot said. Ariana Grande thinks she's risking her music career by criticizing Trump. Now, the only thing that can jeopardize anybody's career is standing up for Trump. Vince Vaughn has talked about this before. But no, she's out here saying that she's risking her career by supporting Trump. By, by, excuse me, by condemning Trump. I can tell you from firsthand experience that the left silences people on the right. If she was to come out in favor of Trump, that would damage her career because the entire brainwashed masses of Hollywood, the people that put her tripe out and call it music, which is blasphemy, are the very people who are against Trump and signing her paychecks. That's why she's on the Dunce Cap of the Month show. Pop star Ariana Grande thinks she's putting her music career at risk by criticizing Donald Trump when that's actually the ultimate act of conformity. I do love PJ Dunn. In an interview he writes with Vogue, the singer said that she was passionately pro-LGBTQ and passionately anti-Donald Trump. Now, pause. That in and of itself doesn't make any sense. Feel has been in Trump's ear since day one. I know, I had two, day one. From the start, he's gay. As a matter of fact, Trump has more gay people in his administration than many people have in other administrations on the left. Now, it's hard to say because Trump's only been at this for a couple of years and some people were in office for eight years, so you can't compare the two yet. But so far, within the first two years, he had a million gay people around him. However, Paul writes, wow, what incredibly risky opinions to hold they are. I would rather sell fewer records and be outspoken about what I think if some fuckery than sell some records. Well, he writes, stunning and brave. I don't think her coming out against Trump is going to cost her any records. Because most of the people against Trump, not all, not all, but most of them are kind of low IQ anyway. So it would make sense that they would find her music because they don't know any better. Those people probably aren't voting for Trump anyhow. The entire entertainment music industry ruthlessly punishes conservatives if they dare let it slip that they support the president. Being anti-Trump, he writes, is the safest opinion any in that industry alone could possibly hold. The fact that Grande thinks that she's somehow engaging in dissident thought is hilarious. What next? Is Ariana going to stick her neck out further by opposing racism and sexism? Thank God there are courageous cultural icons like her. Constantly pushing the boundaries of free thinking. I told you, I love Paul Joseph Watson. He's one of the best uh, journalists extant today. Friends, um, Inslee, Governor Inslee managed to walk himself into the Dump Cap of the Month award show. We have a long show today. So many dumbies. They get dumber as we go. So don't go away. Um, listen to this. The Democratic governor of Washington state believes there is... One, re one person to blame for an incident in which a far-left activist tried to firebomb the ICE facility, and that person is Donald Trump. Another Paul Joseph Watson article, Democratic governor blames Trump for leftist who firebombed an ICE facility. Now, Trump is always getting condemned for being so far on the right. This idiot was a raging socialist. And that's Trump's fault. Because, you know, his principles were the exact opposite of Trump's. 
Governor Jay Inslee was responding to the attack, during which 69-year-old Willem Van Spronsen, who was armed with a rifle, was shot dead after throwing Molotov cocktails at the building and nearby cars. Van Spronsen was an Antifa activist. That's left. Hey, those are the ones protesting Trump, idiot. And he reportedly wrote a manifesto explaining the motives behind the attack. However, according to presidential candidate Inslee, Donald Trump is to blame. Inslee said Trump was intentionally trying to create anxiety and fear among undocumented families. No, undocumented means they broke the law. So he simply wanted them to make the law, uh, to obey the law. And if they came in legally, they had nothing to fear. There's no race there. I'm not allowed to go to Mexico because I'm poor and just walk in and expect them to start giving me things. They shouldn't be allowed to do it coming here either. Fair is fair. That's how you keep a country. And again, I'm nothing against legal immigration. I don't even have anything against lowering the costs of illegal immigration as long as they are interested in becoming American. If I go to Mexico, I think I have an obligation to embrace the culture of Mexico. Otherwise, I should stay the hell out of Mexico. He also tried to deliberately mislead people about the nature of the attacks by claiming that it is unknown whether Van Spronson was targeting detainees or staff when it was established almost immediately that the incident was an anti-ICE attack. We don't know the motivation, Inslee told CNN Saturday. I'm going to keep an open mind about this as the investigation proceeds, and I hope calm and order of the day. Inslee suggested that Trump was to blame. We all know at this moment there is tremendous anxiety in our community. No, not if your community obeyed the law. There's nobody who's legally here from another country who is afraid that Donald Trump is going to throw them out, unless, of course, they you know committed some kind of act, criminal worse. You know what I mean. Nobody here legally is where they're going to be sent home. It's just, it's not happening, so stop. It doesn't matter what color there is. It doesn't matter what religion they are. If they're here legally, they're not worried about getting thrown out. And that's why, Governor Inslee, you made it on the Dunce Capital on the show. But you didn't win. On Newsbusters, beware. Lion King is fascistic white supremacist, says the Washington Post. Now... Not to mention, I'll never watch it because I can't stand Beyonce's voice. It's like a fax machine to me. Not because she's black, because her voice is terrible. Um, the reason nobody takes anyone on the left seriously is because they come up with ridiculous, stupid, brain-headed things like this. Well, it was bound to happen. One of the woke writers at the Washington Post found something political to nitpick about Disney's remake of The Lion King. Rather than let everyone enjoy one of childhood's great classics, Dan Hassler Forrest tried to burst the bubble, pointing out how it is a fascistic story that incorporates white supremacists into a worldview. He has good grief. Hassler Forrest claimed that the very fact that there is a Lion King is a problem. It means that there is a whole strata of animals subject under his rule. He continued saying, The Lion King offers us a seductive worldview in which absolute power goes unquestioned and where the weak and vulnerable are fundamentally inferior. In the budding socialist all-inclusive culture that our author seems to want so bad, the writer said, the fact that Simba and Musaf Mufasa have any authority is a no-go. Forget the fact that their peaceful stewardship of Pride Rock is the only thing that keeps the hyenas at bay. But yeah, that's right. The Lion King, which takes place in Africa with only minimal animal characters, is specifically depicting a white supremacist society. He wrote, The lions is standing in for the rolling class and for the good herbivores embodying society's decent law-buying citizens. The hyenas apparently represent the black, brown, or disabled bodies. According to... This reminds me of the, the New Age nutcases, and I wouldn't be surprised if this guy was a New Age nutcase. Um, this reminds me of the, the loonies that say, 
Well, you know, the planet means this. If this is in your sign, this is what the planet means. Based on... Okay, I get in the Bible. It tells you, you know, the three lampstands in Revelations. Well, that goes back to the Old Testament, and that's explained what that is. I get it there. But when you're dealing with, like, numerology, well, the number 17 means, how do you know? Based on what? What is that based on? The hyenas represent black people. Where? Where have you ever found this at? In your own mind. That's why you're on the Dunce Cap of the Month Award show. Listen to this. Talk about the 1%. Um, and again, this is where I do agree with the left, that we do have a problem with, uh, not with capitalism, but with the pseudo-capitalism that we have. If we had a real capitalism, this might not be the case. Zero Hedge. Earlier this week, we drew attention, it says, to a photo of what we and much of the internet assumed were freshly fired Deutsche Bank employees headed for the exits after clearing out their desks. At the time, we thought that the photo was notable, if for no other reason than that one of the men pictured was carrying a Bitcoin bag, which allowed us to joke about junior Deutsche Bankers inundating crypto startups with resumes. But as we learned on Wednesday, the story behind the photo is much more complex and much worse look for the bank managers who accidentally stumbled into an embarrassing PR blunder. According to the Financial Times, on the monitoring that Deutsche Bank was beginning to process, beginning the process of laying off 18,000 employees, 18,000 people lost their job. Some MDs in its London office were getting fitted for suits that cost 1,500 euros. That's 1,875 smackers. The two men pictured above, they're not traders or analysts, they're tailors. These are garment bags they're carrying. Their names are Ian Fielding Colcutt and Alex Riley, and they work for Fielding and Nielsen Tailoring. It was just a coincidence that we were snapped coming out of the building at the time. So basically on Sunday, DB unveiled that its $8.2 billion restructuring plan involves suspending its dividend, shuttering its global equi equities business, and dramatically reducing its headcount. That means making people jobless. They will likely result in the bank booking a net loss this year. The layoffs began on Monday in the Asian offices, while the 1% gets $1,875 suits. Paul Joseph Watson gave us another story. He's been nailing with the dumbies. We've only got five left here. Woman designs chair to prevent man spreading by forcing men to sit like they have no balls. Now, one of the things that people don't understand is that man spreading isn't done because of some show of manliness. It's done because particularly on a train or a bus, it doesn't feel good to have your legs smashing your cojones together. Another reason people do it is if they've had some kind of urological procedure. Um, particularly, you have to sit in weird ways if you have a catheter. I have a very good friend who's dealing with this problem right now. I can't think of anything more horrifying, by the way. Um, all kinds of surgeries down there involve sitting in certain ways. That's why that idiot throwing bleach on people's laps, I think, should get a felony. Listen to this. A British woman, if you want to call her that, has been awarded for design. She's been awarded, all right, for designing a chair that prevents man spreading by forcing men to sit as if they don't have any balls. And I'm not even joking. Man spreading, otherwise known as having a pair of testicles is where men sit with their legs spread apart on public transport, he writes. 23-year-old Lilia Laurel says she designed the chair following her own experiences of manspreading. It came both from my experiences of men infringing on my space in public and also from Everyday Sexism Project, a website founded by Laura Bates in which women self-testify about sexism that they experience if you think everything is sexism, and that everything is sexism, do me a favor. Pick a number, 13. 
Now, go down the street and see how many 13s you see. See how many people's address add up to 13. You can do that with any number in the world. People do that with their favorite ism, like sexism. With my chair set, I hope to draw awareness to the act of fitting for men and women and inspire discussion around this, said Laurel, who was given the Bellamond Award for Emerging Talent. You ever hear of it? Nobody else has either. He wrote whatever that is. But here's the kicker. This is why she's really almost won the dunce cap of the month. Laurel has also designed a chair which encourages women to engage in the same behavior that she complains about men doing. In other words, you haven't saved any space. And they also mention that it's usually women who are involved in what's called bag spreading, where you put like nine bags all over three seats and you're sitting in only one of them. None of the bags are on your lap or in front of you. I told you, it's the dunce cap of the month show, friends. And they get crazier and dumber. And how about this from the mirror? <sighs> if it did not cost so much to send dunce caps overseas, the next two stories would have absolutely definitely won. I'm telling you now, it would have won. Vlogger dies live, streaming himself eating poisonous centipedes and lizards. Now, I don't know how many of you saw that other idiot. Uh, the chick who was trying to become famous by eating a live octopus, and it almost pulled her eye socket apart. Now, that shouldn't be surprising, because octopus actually do have somewhat of the ability to, for lack of better words, think. So, I mean, that, that was particularly dumb. But listen to this. Even instinct alone. But still, a man has died after reportedly filming himself swallowing poisonous centipedes and geckos alive. Now, he knew they were poisonous, no less. The Chinese vlogger, named only by his surname Sun, live-streamed himself carrying out the stomach-churning challenge which he had hoped would gain him, gain, gain him on more online followers, which I'm sure it did. The 35-year-old said that he had been found lifeless on the by his the 35 year old is said to have been found lifeless on the ground by his boyfriend when she went to check on him at his flat in the eastern city of Haifi he was later pronounced dead so had also been filming himself drinking large amounts of alcohol as well as eating millworms for the platform Duvu and he had almost 15,000 followers now you see and that is one of the major problems we have with our society today. Somebody can give you news, like I'm doing now. now who knows how many hits it'll get. All together with all the different places posted, I don't know, a thousand. My Fukushima updates, some of the most important data that you could possibly get, given to you once a month, a few thousand hits. 10,000 if it really gets aggregated. 15,000 people watch somebody dumb enough to eat a scorpion. And we wonder why we live in such a such a mentally screwed up world. And keep in mind, this is China, so I'm saying world here. As part of the stunt, he would spin a wheel marked with items including centipedes, geckos, millworms, vinegar, eggs, beer, and bougie. It's a clear distilled liquor. He would drink or eat the item the spin lands on in front of the camera, according to the Zine in the Evening News. He collapsed while the stream was still being broadcast, and police later found his camera still running when his body was found. So if I ever keel over here, I can hope my, make my video keep going for everybody. They said he was known as a happy-go-lucky guy. I am sorry he lost his life. It makes me feel a little better about not sending him the Dunce Cap of the Month Award. Um, how about this? Daily Call. Maybe I'd get the Dunce Cap of the Month Award. Then I've never sent one to somebody who's passed before. BBC says we only have 18 months to save the planet from climate change. Now, again, let's read that the way it, people with intelligence read it. Let's read this the way that people understanding real science read this. The BBC says we only have 18 months to save the planet from the tooth fairy. That's what this is. There is no science to prove that man is warming the planet. As a matter of fact, the science proves exactly the opposite. It proves that we are not warming the planet and that there have been times when the planet has been far warmer in places where it's supposed to be out of control now. Here's one of the tricks they use, though. They'll say this is record-breaking heat 
and then they'll show you their records from the last however many years. That's a lie. If you look at ge geological data, in any place, pick your own, that's heating up now or whatever they're saying, look at the geological data. And there will be times all through history when it's been warmer. There were, who, was, who was driving cars 10,000 10, years ago? Who was driving cars a thousand years ago? So don't believe the lie when you see it. I mean, things change naturally. The, the pool where the angel was said to be stirred in the Bible is a dry gullet today. It must have been from all the ancient Hebrews and Romans driving around in their cars. Nikita, also Al Gore, how many incorrect predictions have Al Gore given us over the years? Well, listen to this. Now we have a real dumb D here. Humanity has only 18 months left to take decisive political steps to avert the catastrophic effects of climate change. According to a report Wednesday by the BBC. You know, the last two years of my life have been particularly unhappy. But one thing that does bring me a little bit joy is the fact that I am not the dumbest person who ever lived, nor am I even close. These people right here have to go through life this way. I mean, maybe they're lucky because they don't really know how dumb they are. Do you remember the good old days when we had 12 years to save the planet, wrote BBC environmental correspondent Matt McGrath, who should have no readers after this. Now it seems there's a growing consensus that the next 18 months will be critical in dealing with the global cri heating crisis, among other environmental changes. It's all over in 18 months. Now in 18 months, we look back at this and laugh. We're not going to be supposed to remember it, of course. McGrath referenced statements from Britain's Prince Charles and uh, Postdem Climate Institute founder Hans Joachim uh, Schellenhuber who I believe has been debunked countless times, as evidence that the growing consensus that action must be taken to reduce carbon emissions before the end of 2020, I am firmly of the view that the next 18 months will decide our ability to keep climate change at survivable levels and to restore nature to equilibrium that we need to survival for survival, Prince Charles said. Inbreeding, perhaps. I don't know here. Um, the IPCC report of the carbon emissions would lead to would need to be reduced 45% by 2030 in order to keep global temperatures from rising 1.5 degrees. This is pure bunk science. Pure bunk science. Little things like, you know, the sun tends to have a remarkable effect on the planet. People will talk about subtle changes since 2011, just subtle changes. They forget to tell you that during the March 11, 2011 tsunami and 9.0 earthquake that hit Japan changed the axis of the Earth. And if you factor in the numbers for that shift with the numbers that they're reporting changed or shifted in 2011, you'll find that it was caused by the earthquake. But you're not supposed to speak logic. Guys, we got the runner up the story that is right behind the winner. Colorado State University, avoid using the word America because it's not inclusive. PJ Dub, a new inclusive language guide compiled by Colorado State University asserts that the word America is not inclusive and should be avoided. CSU lists both American and American, America and American as non-inclusive words to avoid due to the fact that America encompasses more than just the U.S. By referring to the U.S. as America, the guide claims that one erases other cultures and depicts the um, United States as the dominant American country. Well, maybe it is. If not, maybe it should be. And if you don't like it in America, then maybe you should leave. If you don't like the fact that we're proud of our country, maybe you shouldn't be here. Shazam, Sparky! 
Other words to avoid. Male and female, ladies and gentlemen, Mr., Mrs., or Miss. Should not use straight. Never say normal people. Shouldn't say handicapped people. War cake, eeny, meeny, miny, mo, Eskimo, freshman, hip hop, hooray, hold down the fort, starving, and policemen are also non inclusive. Which is interesting because I used to date an Eskimo and she was absolutely honored and thrilled by the fact that she was an Eskimo. And I thought it was good. But my point is, she would now be called a racist because she's happy to be an Eskimo. Furthermore, Eskimos are Americans. It's true. So are Samoans. Don't say that. All right, guys. You know what it is. You know what's coming. It's time for the winner. It is time. Once again, I proudly give you the Dunce Cap of the Month Award. Now, do remember that you, specifically you, can donate to this show at the correct views at hotmail.com through PayPal. Every penny that you give to me, I put back into the show. I put it towards a better show. A fraggle. All right, guys. The dunce cap of the month. The money you give to me, guys, it goes towards a better show. I also use it for the price of mailing out dunce caps, which can be kind of expensive. Um, I got the cap and the, I got the award printed this time, so all of you will get to see that. Here's what won: our tax dollars. Our tax dollars hard at work, 79-year-old Garfield Heights woman sentenced to jail for feeding stray cats. Fox News 8 got the story for us. Nancy Segula lives on Havana Road in Garfield Heights, and a couple of years ago, the cats started showing up on her porch. It began in 2017 with me feeding stray kitties. I used to have a neighbor that had a couple of cats, and he moved away, so he left them, Segula said. I would always feed them and care for them because I was worried about them, and I'm a cat lover. Once my neighbors got upset about it, they called the animal ward. She got her first citation in 2017, and more followed. I got a total of four, she said. All right, now let's pause here as somebody who has taken in stray kitties before. If you don't feed them, it's far worse. Because then they're constantly fighting. They're going to breed no matter what. That's what animals do. The city is saying leave them starve to death. Because, of course, they don't want to spend the money to rescue the cats. Or to, to euthanize the cats, which I'm against. But they don't even want to come pick them up. But they want to spend money to harass her. If the money used to harass her had been used to fix up the stray cat problem, then you wouldn't have to harass her. That's why they won the Dunce Cap of the Month, and they'll just stay with me. It gets worse. Her latest citation required her to appeal before Magistrate Jeffrey Short last week. He sentenced her to 10 days in the Cuyahoga County Jail. I couldn't believe what my mother was telling me. She gets 10 days in the county jail. I couldn't believe it, said Dave Pralowski, her son. They wrote son, son. I'm sure people hear about things that happen downtown in that jail, and they gotta my they gotta let my seventy and they are going to let my seventy nine year old mother go there. In Garfield Heights, it's illegal to feed stray cats and dogs under ordinance five oh five point two three. However, Segola doesn't feel the punishment fits the crime. Pause. Oh, this pisses me off. And I've talked about this a million times. The ordinance needs to be eliminated because the ordinance goes against the constitutional rights of the people. There is no ordinance or law that should ever be on the books and obeyed by anyone that supersedes the Constitution. That means a many, perhaps a majority, of the ridiculous laws that we have should not be obeyed. Wasn't it Jefferson that said it was moral to obey an immoral law? Or it was moral to disobey an immoral law. I butchered it. It's too much of a sentence for, for me for what I'm doing. When there are so many people out there who do bad things, she said. Fox News 8 reached out to the dog warden and the mayor of Garfield Heights. Our phone calls were not returned. So here is what I'm sending them. It got wrinkled. This is... uh. A picture of her and the cats. I'm going to show you the hat in a minute. The Dunce Cap of the Month Award. 
The, this dunce cap of the month award I wrote for August 2019 goes without any pussy footing around to the city leaders of Garfield Heights, Ohio and Magistrate Jeffrey Short for failing to understand that it is causing more harm than good by citing elderly Nancy Segula, 79, for feeding feral cats. Perhaps if the money I suggested was used to bother a lady for her kindness could be used to gather up the stray cats, there would be less of there would be less for her to feed. Magistrate Short, for failing to simply throw the case out of court, has then the distinct honor of being worth worthy enough to mention it is not often that true mindless stupidity can be found, but you dunces are the cast me out. Hang this award and your heads in shame. Now, when did school start so damn early? It used to be Labor Day, and now they, I don't know if they let them out early, but they take the kids back way too soon. The, the snot noses bought all of the right poster board, which is why this show is so late. So I had to go with what I got here. Um, it does say dunce in red marker, which you won't be able to see, but... It's on there. Now, I, what I did is I put my drawings on pieces of paper and had to attach the paper. What are you in for, Granny? Kindness. That's a pretty good jail there. Thou shalt not feed pussy. The judge is going to love that, Amy. And, of course, cat with a no. Very sad. Look at this sad face. All of this is being sent. It costs money to mail these out, friends, so do me a favor. Make sure you help support me to do it by donating at the correct views at hotmail.com. And like I always say before I leave, if you're watching this show with someone you love, do them a favor. Reach over. Hey, Paul, what's up? Reach over. Uh, tell them you love them. Tell them you care about them because you never know when they won't be there anymore. God bless.